Hey guys, it's Denise from Lumahat.com and in this video, we're doing a basic basket weave scarf. For a list of supplies and more information, go to the website or the description below. And I want to thank Promise Learning and Shanti Stavmi for covering the cost of closed captioning. All right, let's begin. We're gonna start by securing the yarn to the anchor peg with a basic knot. And then I'm going to wrap 20 pegs. I'm doing this because I'm making a skinny scarf. It's only five inches. If you wanna make it a little wider, use more pegs. In fact, use the other four. Now we're turning around and we're going to knit one row using the U-wrap version of the knit stitch. And to do a U-wrap, you just half wrap your peg and knit off. And then just continue. You need to knit all of your pegs. And your cast on is done. Now in order to get a nice stitch every time we turn around we're going to skip that first peg and knit the next one. Those two are our edges and then we start the stitch pattern. So one, two, three, four knits and again we're using the U-wrap version of the knit stitch. You can use an E-wrap but it gives you a bigger stitch and it changes the look of the uh, scarf so that's why I prefer this one. Now the next part of the pattern, one, two, three, four, are the purls. So we put the yarn under the loop, scoop up our yarn to create a new loop. We're going to take the old loop off and put the new one on and pull the yarn to tighten it up. Again, put your yarn under the loop. With your hook, you're going to scoop up the yarn and create a new loop. Take the old loop off. Put the new one on and pull your yarn. That was the second and this is your third. You create that loop, take the old one off, pull. And here's purl number four. Same thing. And now we're going to repeat that pattern. We're going to do four knits just like before. Again, you know, using the U-wrap version of the knit stitch. We're going to do those four. So here's knit number four. And now we're going to do four purls. Okay. So there's your one. And here's your two. And three. And lastly, unless you added four more to your pattern, that's your last purl. And then you're going to knit your edge. So right here, you're going to knit these two and you're always going to end with knits. So there are your two knit stitches. And now for row two, we're turning directions. So we're going to skip one and knit the next one and skip and slip. Same thing. And now we're going to purl these first four. And you guys remember how to do a purl stitch. You scoop up the yarn, create a new loop, old off, new one on, and pull. And we're going to do four. And this is exactly where we did the purls previously. We're just going to stack four purls over the last four purls. And of course, next we're going to knit four pegs. So Peg two, three, and four. And now following the same pattern, we're going to purl these four pegs. So there's your first, second, your third purl. And I think I said last time we were getting a nice clean stitch. It's a nice clean edge, which is why we slip that first stitch. 
All right, and here we're going to do the last four knits. So that's the pattern. And then you have the last two, which are your edge, and you always knit the last two stitches. Now you can remove the working yarn from the anchor peg and we're going to turn around and for rows three and four, you're basically going to repeat rows one and two. And when you're done with those, we can move on to row five. So row five, we're gonna start with the edge right here. And we're going to skip the first, knit the next peg, and then four pearls. So here's pearl one and pearl two and three. And lastly, here's pearl number four. And following the pattern, the next four, we're going to knit. So here's knit one two, three, four, and so guess what? Now to repeat that pattern, we're going to purl four pegs. So here's one, two, and three, and four, right here, and following four purls, we knit four. So we're going to knit one, two, three. Here is knit number four and then the edges are always two knits. So we're done with row five and on to row six. Okay, time to turn around, slip a stitch and knit the next one and then we're starting the pattern again that's with four knits and we're stacking these knits right on top of the last knits that we did and after we're done with those four knits we're going to do four purls so one two the next one will be three and then purl stitch number four and of course we're going to follow those four pearls with four stitches four knit stitches sorry about that so one two three and four and then of course we're going to follow those with four pearls i think you guys figured out this pattern right more or less so that's pearl number two and three and four Four. and we're done with that pattern we're going to knit the edges and they're always two knits so one and two and we're done with row six and for row seven and eight we're just going to repeat rows five and six to continue the pattern you're going to repeat rows one through eight until you reach the desired length for the average scarf, which is 60 inches, you're going to need approximately 408 rows. Now to cast off, we're going to use a modified basic bind off and we're going to start by wrapping peg 2. You do a knit off, you move your loop from peg 2 over to peg 1, tighten the working yarn and knit off. And then you're going to take the loop from peg one and we're going to put it on peg two. Now, here's where we're going to modify and then we're going to use both of these pegs. We're going to wrap both of them. This is where we modify the basic bind off. Knit off and then you're going to move the loop from peg two over to peg one and you're going to knit off and take that loop from one and put it on two. Now we're gonna go to the basic bind off. And here you're going to wrap only peg two, which is your basic one, and take that and move it over to one and knit off and move the loop from peg one to peg two. 
And so you're going to continue to do this basic bind off, which again, you knit peg two, take it over to peg one, tighten your yarn. You're going to knit off that peg one and move it to peg two. And you continue to do this until you reach peg nine, which is almost the middle, and then we're gonna modify. So wrap peg nine and peg 10, knit off on peg 10 and nine, and then move the loop from peg two over to peg one, knit off, and then move that peg back over to what would be peg two, but it's also peg 10. Remember, it's worked over two pegs. That's why I call them one and two. And now 10 and 11 are your new pegs, one and two. So you wrap peg two, knit off, move it over to peg one, and knit off, and move the loop from that peg one over to peg two. Now, I hope that wasn't too confusing, all right? And now we're going to continue with the basic bind off where you knit peg two, knit off, move it over to peg one, knit off, and move that peg, that loop, back over to the peg next to it. And you're going to continue with the basic bind off until you're in your second to last peg. If this is a bit much for you, you can always research. Um, a video for the basic bind off and just do the basic one. I prefer this one because it keeps the edge, I'm sorry, keeps the end of the um, scarf from being too tight. This kind of gives us a little loose feeling and it looks better. All right, now when you reach peg 18, we're going to modify the bind off again and we're going to modify it by wrapping both pegs one and two and remember I call them one and two because we're doing this technique you knit them off you move the loop from peg two over to peg one tighten knit off and take the loop off peg one and move it over to peg two now these two are your new pegs one and two and now we're gonna do the basic so we're only gonna wrap peg two take the loop move it over to peg one tighten and knit off and you are done with the bind off i'll give you a link to a video for the modified basic bind off specifically all right now you can uh, cut your yarn take your hook and you're going to pull that loop until it releases the loom and now you are done with your cast off and it's time for you to stretch your stitches. So grab the work and you're gonna go from one end all the way to the other and make sure you stretch out all of your stitches. The scarf will not look right if you don't do this part. It seems like nothing, but it needs to be done. All right, and as you can see, it's nice and stretchy. And just keep going, make sure you stretch out everything. And um, you can then go ahead and get a um, crochet hook. And we're going to go ahead and weave in the ends. So take your hook and grab your working yarn. Pull it through. And now we're going to pull through these little loops right in here, right on the reverse side. And just feed them through. Because the intent is to hide that working yarn so we just keep pulling it a little bit by little bit until you feel that your working yarn is secure enough you know you don't have to do this endlessly um, just enough so that you hit it and you feel comfortable and at that point um, I take my yarn and I do the opposite direction so that you know when you wash the scarf um, it doesn't, uh, you know, come loose. So I do it in the opposite direction. And then you can just get your scissors um, after you feel like you've 
fed the yarn in well enough and just cut the excess yarn. You'll notice that your edges look really nice and neat. See, I just love that uh, bind off. It's not too tight and you have to be careful with this stitch because you don't want that bind off to be too tight. You want it to stretch well. All right, now the other side does not look so good. It looks pretty funky and there is a way to resolve this. Just find the working yarn that was the cast on and pull on it so you see uh, where it's wrapped here at the end and just pull that out okay so that it's nice and loose like that and then go to the other end of um, your cast on and pull on that loose loop and it'll show you where the next one is and pull on that one and go to the next one and you're just going to continue to pull on this cast on um, these really loose loops it can look a little can, you know difficult but it really isn't and you don't have to do this if you're comfortable with uh, your loose loops just leave it like that for me I think it's worth it to take these you know few minutes and just clean it up because what I want are two edges that look the same this is not gonna happen if you don't take the time to pull on these loose loops um, and especially with this kind of skinny scarf it's not a big deal to just pull on it I would tell you to do a smaller uh, project and practice this technique because it's so it's so worthwhile look how um, every now and then you might have one that's a little looser than the other one so just tighten it up a little bit and then go back where you left off and just um, Pull on them and you're gonna see that it gives you such a nice clean edge that you're gonna want to do this with all of your projects I have to say that um, I do this on 99.9% .9 of the projects um, that I make even on small gauge looms so especially on this one because I don't like the loose loops all right just keep pulling till you get to the very end and I'm showing you here that that was the last of it see right there that was the very um, end of your cast on and that's it and you're done now just take the crochet hook and you're gonna weave in the end just like you did the other side and you'll see that they match so perfectly you don't have one end that's bigger than the other see they match perfectly so cool I love it nice and clean edge you can't even tell what's the cast on and which one is the bind off right looks great on both ends ta-da